from the 24 hour race at the Nürburgring in Germany. Welcome to the GCN show. Hello and welcome to the GCN show brought to you by our friends at Wiggle. This week we book the trend and tell you why we think that road bikes are still better than gravel bikes. Puh. Do you agree? Yeah, we've also got two more doses of controversy in Cycling Short, plus a hack that's genuinely blown our minds. I say our minds. Ollie's looking less enthusiastic about the stone in the rear derailleur than I am, but you just wait, it's cracking. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that some of the new climbs featured in this year's Vuelta a España are wheelie steep. This is pro cyclist Ivan Garcia Cortinez struggling to keep his front wheel down. Ole! <laughs> Eat your heart out, Sags. Yeah. We also learned that we often talk about the, the hazards of riding in Australia, such as spiders, snakes, uh, thylacines. Crocodiles, drop white sharks. Drop bears. Drop bears. Yeah. Um, well, we also learned that kangaroos are, if not more dangerous than all of those things. Now, seemingly every week this year has seen a new gravel bike unleashed upon the world. And most of the major manufacturers have brought out gravel bikes as well this year. And this is for good reason too, because more and more riders are waking up to the joys of riding off-road and without having to don heavy body armour and ride big, slow, heavy mountain bikes. Yeah. It's not a lie to say that gravel bikes are great. They're fun, they're versatile. I mean, they can literally do almost anything, but, and it is a big but, are road bikes still just better? Well, here are four reasons why they might be. Right, reason one, road bikes are faster. Yeah. There's no denying it. Nope. You know, with narrower, skinnier tires, narrower handlebars, and more aerodynamic frames and wheels available, you can go much faster on a road bike than a gravel equivalent for the same effort. Yeah, let's face it, everyone loves going fast. The sensation of speed, the actual speed, and given that road bikes are faster, that surely makes them a little bit better. It's a bit like putting a 4x4 SUV against a mid-engine sports car, except for no more money. I mean, who wouldn't want a mid-engine sports car for no more money when the wind's in your hair? Yeah, it might be a little bit less practical. You know, you might not be able to put the dog in the boot, but it's really bad, does it? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'll take a sports car every day of the week. Um, when you jump on a road bike after you've been riding a gravel bike, you know, the difference in speed is so tangible that, I mean, well, you struggle to hold on, such as the acceleration as it surges you forward. I mean, you'd be on about 10 kilometers an hour faster. Bit of an exaggeration, Ollie. Just, just uh, well, maybe a slight exaggeration, but it, in essence, a road bike just makes me feel like I'm a better cyclist. Reason number two: you don't have to clean your road bike as much because inevitably, if you ride a bike off-road on gravel, then it's going to get covered in way more dust than it would if you're riding on road. Or, or mud if you're British. Yeah, true. Now, admittedly, gravel bikes are designed to cope with this. They've got greater tire clearance, they've got disc brakes, but you still have to clean all the crap off. Whereas if you ride your road bike in dry conditions, you barely have to clean it at all. So we're told. Yeah, well, that's basically the main reason why I haven't dipped my toe into cyclocross. I just can't be bothered with all the cleaning <laughs> the bike involved. I mean, the fact that I would be totally rubbish at it has nothing to do with it. No, now as a cross fan, I do have to say that I consider the cleaning like a worthwhile trade-off, although the broken washing machines at the end of the year do annoy me slightly. But the fact is, get a bike muddy and it is gonna wear out quicker. So if you've got a gravel bike and you ride it off-road, you do have to look after it. Reason three, they're lighter. So gravel bikes are designed to be strong, rugged, reliable, and durable. 
much like Sai. Consequently, being lightweight is a secondary priority and not the sort of first design objective. No, and that is a shame because the feeling of dancing up a climb on a lightweight bike was great, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, in the UK, I often run a reliable but heavy uh, winter bike in the wetter, colder months. Which are they, all of them? Yeah, and when I put my better bike, when I take my better bike out and on the, on the nicer weather, it just, the sensation of being on that lighter bike, it's like coming out of hibernation. It, it feels amazing. The, the way you're able to dance up climbs on the lighter, it's just, it's, oh, it just puts a smile on your face. It does. Once you've ridden a lightweight bike, heavier bikes and gravel bikes do tend to be significantly heavier. They just feel like a bit of a burden. They're holding you back because Let's, let's say like a top end road bike now is gonna be about seven kilos. When you factor in the gravel bike's heavier frame, heavier tires, at the very least, you're looking at another kilo, two kilos potentially on top. Yeah, and that's before you've festooned all your worldly possessions to every orifice and sort of nook and cranny on the frame. It's like riding a pack mule compared to a thoroughbred racehorse. I'm not, I'm not totally sure you, you have to put all your worldly possessions on it just because it's a gravel bike. You do, it's just, one of the rules. It's one of the rules of gravel bike. Is it? Yeah, oh, right. totally, yeah. Reason number four, potentially the most important reason, if not the most controversial, road bikes just kind of look better, don't they? I mean, the sleek classic lines of a road bike, or maybe like the modern cutting edge technological lines of a cutting edge roast bike, like your new Trek Madon. Ollie. Yeah, oh man, I love that Trek Madon. Uh, I just think, yeah, road bikes, they're sleek, they're sharp, they're aggressive looking. And gravel bikes in comparison, just, well, they look a bit slow. It's like a sort of baggy pair of Y fronts compared to a thong. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a point. I feel more comfortable talking about SUVs and sports cars <laughs> than, than your choice of underwear, Ollie. But yeah, okay. Um, Anyway, those are four reasons why we shouldn't forget why road bikes are flipping cool. But let us know in the comments section whether you think that actually road bikes are still better or are you a committed gravel rider? And if so, why are gravel bikes better? I think this one could get pretty heated. In fact, we have a poll on screen now. Very simple, vote. Are road bikes better than gravel bikes? Yes or no? Yeah, oh, how was your uh, gravel biking trip to Iceland last week? Ah. Oh. It was so cool. Yeah? Amazing, absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I've got to say, I flipping love gravel bikes. They got us to places that road bikes could never have gone. It was cool. It did look really, I was really jealous that trip actually. Yeah. Can, can I come gravel biking ne next time with you? Next expedition? Mm. Be a pleasure, Ollie. Just don't pack too much stuff and no thongs. Oh. You may remember that last week we launched our amazing competition to win the trip of a lifetime to Oman. Ride the Oat Route Oman and do it on your brand new 3T Strada bike. Well, that competition is still open, so you still have chance to enter, but we can now reveal the route itself. Yeah, it sounds like an absolute corker, to be honest. Uh, the first stage is 83 kilometers long and includes the fearsome climb of Jebel Akhtar, which averages 10% for 14 kilometers. Sounds, sounds fun, that one. It does, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> uh, the Tour of Oman goes up that one, actually, but it only goes halfway up. They can't do the whole thing. Pros aren't good enough. Uh, anyway, day two, 145 kilometers long, again in the Hajar Mountains, before the final day, day three, is a time trial through the historic Alhambra town. And uh, yeah, sounds great. Do you sounds know, awesome. It does, yeah. doesn't it? Do you know who's excited for it as well? Who? Emma's excited for it. I'm super excited to be riding the Oak Route Amman in March 2019. Just sounds like the most amazing place to ride a bike. Firstly, of course, the winter weather is perfect. Secondly, it's culturally really interesting, but very welcoming and very friendly. And of course, Amman has huge mountains and I really like mountains. But I thought I'd better start training because, well, it's not till March next year, but you can't start too early, can you? So that's why I'm riding up this hill again. Now, as well as that amazing prize up for grabs from Oman, we've actually got an amazing prize with the results all ready for you. The Schindelhauer Ludwig Urban Bike with Brooks Saddle that we gave away just the other week, but we never told you who won it. You ready for it? 
The winner is Dimitri Cavour. Dimitri Cavour, congratulations to you. That is a bike so stylish, it made even Dan Lloyd look cool when he rode it. That is how cool that bike is. So uh, yeah, enjoy it very much. Send us a photo as well. It's now time for cycling shorts. We begin cycling shorts this week with some controversial news in Milan as coffee chain Starbucks opens its first Italian branch. Yeah, controversial perhaps, but also apparently hugely popular because people queued for hours around the block in order to get in. We will leave the coffee debate to one side though and instead steer you to this, the Bianchi Starbucks Reserve, a collaboration between the legendary Milan-based bike brand Bianchi and the coffee chain. It is, as you can see, a steel, and yes, you guessed it, gravel bike. And if you want one, you're gonna have to go visit Starbucks. In now, Milan. We also had some bad news this week. So, a study that was published in the Journal of Outdoor Recreation and Tourism. Ooh, it's a good one was titled, The Influence of Tire Size on Bicycle Impacts to Soil and Vegetation. Crack it, I hope that is more interesting than it sounds, Ollie. It's incredibly interesting. It says that narrow cyclocross tires apparently cause more damage to trails than fatter mountain bike tires, and apparently even more than hikers. Well, it is quite interesting, actually. Fair enough, and also, slightly bad news indeed, to. to slightly take away from the new positive drugs test that has just come out of the pro peloton. Uh, unfortunately, Konstantin Sutsov of Bahrain Merida, and I think important to say formerly of Sky and High Road before that, returned a positive for EPO in an out of competition test earlier in the summer. It's quite unsettled me that one, I'll, I'll be honest. I yeah. mean, yes, uh, Konstantin Sutsov is a rider from an older generation, but in recent years, he's not really done much, and I just don't really understand it. But no. perhaps someone who would understand it better is David Miller, himself a former doper, and in recent years, a staunch advocate of anti-doping. And he's just announced that he's gonna be running for president of the CPA, which is the Riders' Union. Yeah, I think he'd do a really good job of that as well. He is a super bright guy, and also incredibly passionate about racing and rider welfare. So it'll be interesting to see what happens, Partly because it sounds a little bit like the election process is something of a lottery. And I'm basing this only on tweets I saw from Garrett Thomas at the weekend. But if he was right, it sounds like riders have to either be at the World Championships to vote in person, or from certain longer established cycling nations like France and Italy and Spain, a delegate actually votes on their behalf and they don't really get a direct say in it. Yeah. It seems really weird for their own union, but there we go. It's a bit strange. But speaking of Garrett Thomas, he's just announced that he's extended his contract at Team Sky by three years. Yeah. So I wonder if he'll win another Grand Tour. It's going to be difficult considering Chris Froome is still there and also talented riders like Egan Bernal coming up through the ranks as well. Yeah, you, you wonder whether he kind of put personal ambition to one side before yeah. he signed that one. But anyway, time will tell, undoubtedly. Uh, Interestingly, uh, Time has also told uh, with Dimension Data's hiring policy for this season uh, as it became clear that they'd now signed all three of the riders from the podium of this year's Amstel Gold Race, following the news that Enrico Gasparotto, himself a former winner actually of Amstel Gold, has now joined Michael Volgren and Roman Kreuziger for Dimension Data's 2019 roster. Not a bad recruitment policy, that, if it gets you riders of that standard. And sure. We've said it before, Michael Valgren. He's a super talent. Super talent. Two other super talents, Larry Warbass and Connor Dunn. Yeah. Uh, we've been following them closely this week on social media as they completed their hashtag no go tour. So for those of you who are unaware, both riders were members of the now uh, defunct Aqua Blue Sport team, which, well, ended sadly this year. Uh, well, yeah, just the other week, didn't it? They, the rug was pulled out from under their feet, literally days before their last race of the season, the Tour of Britain. Uh, but rather than sulk, they went out and went bikepacking instead. So they went for one week, racked up 50 hours of saddle time, clocked up 1,150 kilometres, and by all accounts, they had an absolute riot. Uh, some of the stuff they posted on social media was absolutely genius, including pictures like this one from Connor. This is the Lac de Roseland, which uh, well, kind of looks better than, than many of the views they would have seen at the Tour of Britain. Not all, but you know, 
Yeah. Looks pretty nice. I like this one from uh, Larry, Wedding Crashers. <laughs> so, uh, I can't tell if the groom is happy or annoyed by that gesture. I think something might have got lost in translation. Yeah, yeah, that hand, yeah, the hand gesture <laughs> could go either way, couldn't it? Uh, also, some bad news actually for Larry and Connor as the uh, Finnish cycling resource, Amati Piorelli, or however you pronounce it in Finnish, uh, pointed out that unfortunately their times up out Duez, they weren't good enough to break the top 200 of all time. Probably, in fact, not even the top 1,000. Gutted. Depe well, to be fair to them though, they were riding fully laden uh, on road bikes. bikes though, Ollie. Yep. Road bikes, not gravel no bikes. No gravel bikes. Um, but yeah, it's a nice, nice sentiment. I think that the life lesson learnt here is that when life gives you lemons, just go on a bike packing adventure. Yeah, and also make sure you have a catchy hashtag on social media so everyone can see you do it. We also learned the sad news that double Olympic champion Christina Vogel has been left paralysed following a training crash in June of this year. Yeah, a hugely decorated cyclist. Vogel won the team sprint gold in 2012 and the individual sprint gold in 2016. And all of us here at GCN would like to wish her the very best for her recovery and her rehabilitation. Tech of the week now, but before we head over to John in the workshop, we've got some new tech of our own right here. It's from Physique, but unfortunately, all I can tell you is that you're gonna find out what is inside this box on Monday. I can't, about that. I can't wait that long, I'm gonna have a look now. Over to you, John. Cheers, lads. Well, this week we've got cracking content for you as ever. We've got some custom shoes, we've got gold rollers, we've got two new bikes spotted on social media. Plus, should you be riding with a bike computer on your bike? Also, don't forget, there's a poor kid out there who now has to sleep on the sofa. Yep, that's right. Anyway, more on that this Thursday on the GCN Tech Show. It's not to be missed. It's now time for our weekly inspiration, where you submit inspirational cycling photos for a chance to win 50, 75, or 100 pounds in vouchers from our friends at Wiggle. I, I basically love this, because we used to get to look at great photos. Well, yeah, yeah it's brilliant. basically. Yeah. Uh, now, if you want to enter this competition, actually, before we start, then uh, either submit your photos on Instagram with the hashtag GCN Inspiration, or using our uploader, the link to which is in the description beneath this video. Right then, without further ado, who has come third in this week's competition, Ollie? Uh, so in third place this week, we've chosen Janssen underscore WCC on Instagram, who submitted this really cool picture, um, well, riding in the rain. Yeah, taking a Killington stage race in Vermont in the USA. I tell you what, I don't particularly like riding in the rain all that much, but that has inspired me to do so. That is a cool photo, isn't it? There's something about the big, wide, empty road, the corner, the feeling of speed. I think that's great. Yeah, and that's a nice sweeping bend through there. I mean, I unfortunately have to ride in the rain well, we have to ride in the rain quite a bit well, yeah. because of where we live, but that makes it look great. Yeah, it does. Funny that. Uh, Ma miraculous photograph, that. <laughs> right then, in second place, we've got this one, which is something a little bit different, perhaps. It's just sent in by Ian, and it's taken at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. He's saying, uh, 17 degrees centigrade for the start of spring. Heading home like I normally do, crossing the walkway over the train tracks, and couldn't help but notice the stunning day Melbourne turned on for us. Uh, so there we go. Then he says the bike is his runabout pub bike, a Reed Harrier. Yeah. But this, that's cool, isn't it? There's something about that shot, not just the banging weather and the, uh, the nice sunset there. Yeah, I wanted to, we picked this photo because it's inspirational. It sums up what cycling you know, can be about for a lot of people. It doesn't have to be up a mountain on an amazing super race bike, you know? It's, that is, an inspirational piece of cycling and it's in a setting where a lot of people that is their riding yeah to my mind that photo spells out freedom and yeah. not in the brave heart kind of way uh, <laughs> right then the winner then the winner of a hundred pounds of wiggle vouchers is john uh from <laughs> we don't know your surname john <laughs> But you might recognise the photo you said. This yeah. is from Los Osos, California, and that is cool, isn't it? Yeah, that is great. He's riding his Argon 18 Galleon Pro, and he's just riding through the trees on a quiet training ride. But that photo, I just love the tranquility of it, and that road just looks absolutely beautiful. It does, doesn't it? I'll tell you what it reminds me of. 
don't know if you've seen this film, but Place Beyond the Pines with Ryan Gosling, where he's going through, I mean, he's on a motorbike, but it's that sort of like coasting through. I haven't through. seen that, but if, if it looks like that photograph, I'm gonna go check it out. It's now time for hack forward slash bodge. And first up this week, we have Nick Perkins, who, well, this is pretty, pretty impressive. He smashed it out of the park, Ollie. This is what I was so excited about in the introduction to the show. So basically, that horrible feeling when you snap your gear cable and your derailleur plunges all the way down to your 11 tooth sprocket. Now we've got hacks here on GCN already about how you fix it, involving wrapping your cable around, pulling it through the other way. But simply stick a stone in it. Why didn't we think of that one? I know, it's one of those things of, how has no one thought of this before? Well, perhaps they have. But anyway, Nick has brought it to our attention, so thanks for that. Well, yeah, not only that, it's a it's a stone with two with different dimensions. So basically, he can put it in one orientation to put it in his 25 for climbing, flip it, and he can get it in his 16. He should make these stones and sell them. But, and people yeah. have them in their saddlebags permanently. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Genius. Yeah, that's really good. There we go. Anyway, thank you very much for sending that one. Uh, well, what were you saying, hack or bodge? Oh, it's a hack for me. Absolutely, hack. Great day hack. Right then. Uh, next up, we have... Ooh, bodge. <laughs> uh, this, which is, well, it's like a sort of empty can that's been bolted on to the, uh, to the back of the bike to act as a chain catcher. That looks nasty. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not a massive fan of uh, chain keepers at the best of times. But, uh, but yeah, anyone, that was sent in by uh, Jeremy Trottier. So, I'm um, sorry, Jeremy. Yeah, thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we've got this one from uh, Moulal uh, Camdir, uh, which is when you go camping and you forget your umbrella holder. Uh, well, um, I mean, that does get you out of a sticky situation, doesn't it? But mm. that. It's a lot of seat posts. Yeah, big seat posts, isn't it? That's yeah. some serious uh, saddle <laughs> to bar drop. <laughs> yes. Pres presuming his saddle's under his umbrella. Anyway, I think. Is that a bodge? It, it's a bodge, but I do like that he's put one hashtag. And, and that hashtag is hashtag MacGyver. <laughs> That's great. Anyway, right, next up, we've got this one uh, sent in from Sarah from Griefswald, Germany. Now that is another, like, people carrier of a bike. Yeah, another breach of the UK highway code, but it's okay because it's in Germany. Yeah, maybe um, it breaches that highway code as well. What do you reckon? What? It's also slightly scary because it's kind of sprayed up like a ghost bike, isn't it? Which, which, you know, given that it looks like it's probably a death trap, uh, feels yeah. like a bit of a, you know. The, the saddle, the, the, the rear tyres look a bit flat as well. I, that's, that's a bodge for me. I, well, I except it's done with welding, by the look of it. Yeah. <laughs> They've welded that bike. Uh, Someone's yeah. got great lengths. Yeah, it's still a bodge. All right, bodge, sorry, Sarah. Uh, okay, anyway, this one, I think we're going to finish on a high, aren't we? This we is are. sent in by Colin, and this is actually a follow-up, isn't it, from uh, the, uh, a previous entry for his custom uh, Wahoo mount, I believe. And now he's 3D printed... Uh, well, a light mount. <laughs> Sorry, I'm speechless there yeah. for a moment. Uh, two lights mounted. It looks like a fighter plane, doesn't it? Not a bike. Yeah, it's a great... Well, it's, it's aero and it's neat. And it, and it's just it just looks very cool on the front of his sort of well what is already a very neat cockpit on the giant propel but rather than sort of festoon lights to it in a sort of ungainly fashion with big sort of rubber straps and cable ties he's just got a really neat narrow solution there that's that's pretty cool isn't it it's like, isn't it it's one of my little pet hates is having a light mounted off center on my bike yeah uh, and given that my lights are mounted off center on on any bike that I ride. It's good. Well, it's like a pet hate for the entire winter. Top marks for symmetry. Um, but anyway, get involved. If you want to submit uh, something for judgment, frankly, in Hack or Bodge, then do so either via the GCN Uploader, the link to which is in the description beneath this video, or using the hashtag GCN Hack on social media. It's now time for the caption competition where you have a chance to win a Camelback GCN water bottle. Oh yeah. Last week we had this picture of a very ripped looking like Chateau of the Cofidis team. And the winning caption is? It was sent in by Sean Svedlenak, uh, and it was, it's gonna take a lot of sunscreen to Cofidis whole area. <laughs> yes, I love it. Just our level of humor, yep. i.e. rubbish. But anyway, there we go, good enough to stand out 
and get yourself this Camelback water bottle, which we will send over to you, so get in touch with us on Facebook and uh, let us know your address. Right then, what about this week's caption photo then for you to get your teeth stuck into? Well, it's a bizarre one, isn't it? Yeah. Any idea what he's protesting there? Uh, not sure, but I think I've got one. Go on then. Yeah. Oh, this, this welt has been well hard. I'm absolutely dead at the end of today's stage. I don't know what to say about that, Ollie. Um, I thought I was good, that. Well, no, I mean, I mean, thanks, uh, thanks, thanks for trying. I tried really hard. Yeah, well, that's you've done your best, and that's what counts ultimately. Um, just pop that out of out of reach. Uh, no, seriously, if you think you can beat Ollie, and uh, by God, I hope you can, uh, <laughs> make sure you stick your comment in the caption section down below. We will read them all and then pick out our favourite next week. That you know, that was a good effort, mate. Thanks. I couldn't have done better which everyone will agree with. Before we get on to what is coming up on the channel this week, let us, as per tradition, take a bit of time to go through one or two cracking comments that you left under last week's videos, like this one, which Charles Meadows wrote underneath your mega video, actually, about whether you can fix carbon fiber frames after they've broken. Uh, and he has said, uh, well, yes, clearly, duct tape. Lots of duct tape. <laughs> Uh, what, was any duct tape used in any of the fixings for those parts? Uh, categorically, no. Really? There no was duct tape? No duct tape being. I don't think they had any duct tape. They must have done. Everyone's got a bit of duct tape stashed away, haven't they? Maybe yeah. not for fixing frames, but you know. Yeah, maybe. Well, the a next... properly pro outfit, clearly, then. Yeah, the, do you know what? Right, I should admit something. I only learned that it was duct tape last week. I thought it was duct tape for, for my really? entire life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Saf 1981. I can just hear a load uh, of people switching off. Yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't have admitted that. Uh, I thought this guy knew new stuff. <laughs> He's got PhDs. Saf 1981 uh, wrote this comment uh, on, well, it was on one of Opie's videos, wasn't it? Saying, rumor has it that Chris dropped 1.2 kilograms off his bike by cutting the sides of his Travolta hair. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a fair point, actually. I think we should probably ask the man himself, what does John Travolta think about that? Yeah, I thought he might have something interesting to say. Uh, right, lastly, sticking with hair, uh, Stefan Harris, uh, well, he said that Cy is the Lantern Rouge of the GCN hair classification, which, uh, well, it's no surprise, but, you know, even though I've got I think low you're, expectations. I think your hair's great, mate. You're trying really hard. <laughs> And, you know. The question is whether or my <laughs> hair is better or worse than your caption composition <laughs> effort, which uh, which would not be saying much for either, would it? But uh, anyway, there we go. More to the point, what is coming up on the channel this week? What have you got to look forward to? Well, on Wednesday, how to hide on a ride. Oof. Yeah, Useful one, tactics if you ride in a group van. Yeah, Everyone looks... needs to know how to hide on those days when you haven't quite got it. Yeah, Sags is great at that as well, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. uh, Thursday, five car park tricks to impress your mates. Friday is another Ask GC Anything. Saturday, why do you need to track stand? Well, I tell you what, it's gonna be an interesting one, that one. Uh, Sunday is my own little KOM challenge that I have set myself, uh, which I'm exceedingly nervous about. So please everyone join me in keeping your fingers firmly crossed all week that I managed to pull that one off. Uh, Monday is of course the GCN Racing News Show, and then Tuesday is the GCN Show where we're gonna be in Alta Madea, mate. Yeah. Oh yeah, we're Looking going out to Italy. Chris and James have already gone, in fact. Emma is joining them soon after. Oscar's going out, then we're going out. It's going to be good. Uh, but whilst we're out there, don't forget that Lloydie is going to be still back here doing all the Vuelta stuff, isn't he? Yeah, so there's Vuelta highlights each day on Facebook, so you can catch the previous days that we've done already, if you've not already seen them. Um, and there's also going to be Vuelta content on the ground from Chris Opie, who's going to be there as well. Yeah, that's right. Uh, God, there's a lot of stuff going on, oh, isn't there? On. And speaking of the Vuelta, well, there's still a chance to get hold of our Spanish-themed T-shirts, but they are limited edition, so if you want one, head over to the GCN shop. That's right, shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. And unfortunately, that brings us towards the end of the GCN show, although one other point of business, Ollie, uh, as we filmed this, we have just ticked over 1.5 million subscribers, which is utterly amazing. And so we wanted to thank all of you 
for your continued support for GCN. It means the absolute world to us. So yeah, a genuine heartfelt thank you from all of us here. Uh, right, I suppose the only thing left to say then is if you fancy another video right now, then you could do far worse than check out Ollie's absolute banger of whether oh, cheers, or not, mate. Yeah, whether you can fix a carbon fiber frame. That was just down there.